Hello and welcome to our last session of Petitioning the King. I can hardly believe we're at session four. And today we're going to talk about praying for the hard to pray for. Because you know what? Intercession changes things. And the first thing it changes is the person who's interceding. God works and moves in the intercessor's heart and our spirit as we pray. What he's doing is he's moving and he's aligning our spirit and our prayers with his will. And everything changes. Everything changes. And this has happened to me. And particularly when I pray for those people and those things that are hard to pray for. And I bet it's going to happen to you too because that's how God works. And so can we just be honest and say that there are hard things that we need to pray for? And some of them we don't want to pray for. And I find that to me there are two categories. It's, it's that there are some things that I just don't know what to pray. And that makes it more difficult for me. And then there are those, and sometimes it's people, and I just really don't want to pray. Thank you very much. Have you been there? If you haven't, you probably will. But you know, I find that God works in my heart, particularly when I do pray for those things and those people that are hard to pray for. So let's talk about the first category first, because I think that's the easiest category. The what do I pray when I don't know what to pray? And it could be something like a diagnosis. It could be a medical condition when all the choices don't seem very good and you're just really not sure what to pray. Or it could be unwelcome news about a child or a family member or a job or a situation. Um, it could be persecution of brothers and sisters in Christ somewhere in the world. It could be a natural disaster. It could be a man-made disaster. Perhaps it's the consequences of a decision that was made earlier, and now the outcome is obvious, and there's just really not what we had hoped for. And all these things are hard, but we can bring them to our God because He is able and He has all knowledge and all power, and He wants us to bring them to Him. So what should we do? Well, first we should pray. That's what we should do. We should pray anyway, even when we feel unsure, even when we feel inadequate. Pray anyway, because we can rest in the truth that God is listening and that He cares and He wants us to pray and He wants us to bring everything to Him because He's going to be faithful to His promises. And so in our last session, we looked at different scriptures which show that when we pray, God is listening and that we are not alone. And we are not alone when we don't know what to pray. We still have the Holy Spirit who's interpreting our prayers. We have Jesus Christ who is interceding for us. We have brothers and sisters in Christ who will come along beside us and pray in agreed prayer with us. And what do we pray? Well, you know, when you don't know what to pray, you can never go wrong praying for God's sovereignty, appealing to His sovereignty and remembering His attributes, His character, His nature. And that's He is faithful. He is true. He is kind. He is merciful. He is gracious. He is compassionate. He is love all of those attributes, we can call on Him and remind Him and ask Him to be that in this hard situation. I want to give you some scriptures because I just love to do that. And I want to tell you, I had a really hard time narrowing it down because I could have gone on for 
hours giving you wonderful scriptures that you can pray. But I want you to listen and I want you to hear the God-centered prayers and scriptures acceptable to Him because those are so powerful. So just close your eyes and just listen and just let His Word wash over you and accept that truth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Matthew 28, 18. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Exodus 34, 6. God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. And my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches of His glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. By your appointment, they stand this day for all things serve you. Psalm 119, 89 through 91. The Lord will fulfill His purpose for you. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Psalm 138, 8. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Him who loved us, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans eight thirty seven through 39. These are promises and references that we can pray to God and bring into any hard situation. And I want to encourage you to begin to compile your very own list of God's promises and attributes that you can pray and bring into the hard situations when you're not quite sure what to pray. And so now it's time for us to talk about the second category. You know, the ones that you don't really want to pray for. Thank you. You'd just really rather not. It might be that this person or this event in some way was hurtful. Could be emotionally. It could be um Physically, it could be financially. It could be that that was hurtful to you, or it could be that it was hurtful to someone that you love. It could be that the person's actions or the event or the situation are just so obviously outside of God's Word and His revealed best through Scripture that you're shocked, that you're speechless, that you're angry even. The only prayer you might really want to pray might be for judgment and justice. I get that. But you know, I've come to understand 
that most of the time, now not all of the time, but most of the time, when I feel like that, I'm much too focused on me. Have you been there? Probably. You can relate. And I need to say at this point that I understand that some of you who are participating in our study may have endured true evil that has been done to you. And I'm not talking about focusing too much on yourself when you have endured evil that has been done to you. I pray that the Lord will bring healing to your heart, your soul, and your mind, and that you find wholeness in Him and peace, and that He brings you out to that spacious place that He has provided just for you because He loves you. And I hope that you have that peace and, and know beyond any doubt that Romans 12, 9 is true. And it says, Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Our God is righteous and just. At the same time, He is merciful and compassionate, and He always does what He says that He will do. And He will do it at the right time and in the right way and to the right degree. And you can rest in that. So now let's go back and let's talk about those who are hard to pray for because deep down we just really don't want to pray for them. And I will let you fill in the blank for your I'd really rather not pray for blank. Thank you very much. But let's look at a few places in Scripture and let's see what Scripture has to say about that attitude of the heart. Israel has sinned, and they've been following after other gods. And in Jeremiah 29, we see that the Lord God Almighty has allowed the Babylonians to take many captives from Jerusalem and take them back to Babylon while he dealt with those who were left in Jerusalem. And this is the letter that Jeremiah wrote to the exiles who were in Babylon. It's in Jeremiah 29, verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there, do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Okay, let's think about this a minute. You have been forcibly taken from your home. You have been marched into an entirely different country. Your life, your culture, your laws, your language, everything has changed. And there is no going back. Yet... God has commanded you to pray and to pray for the city. And not just to pray for the city, but to pray for the welfare of the city. The city made up of the people who came and drug you back to Babylon. The city made up of the people who may possibly have done unspeakable things to you or to your family members. Those who deprived you of your home and your family, your property, and the life you had, and now you are called to pray for them. How hard would that have been? I think it would have been hard. And yet, God promises in this command that where the city finds its welfare, the Israelites would find their welfare too. So in other words, bloom where you're planted, and pray for this city, and as it goes well for them, it'll be well for you too. Wow. 
okay. And you know what? Jesus taught this very clearly in the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5, we read this. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. This is very clear. And Jesus not only taught this, he walked it out. In Luke 23, we read this. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. Jesus, who died for us while we were still sinners, and that's Romans 5 eight, erases any and all arguments that we could make about why we do not want to pray for those situations and those people that we find it hard to pray for. Because He showed His love for us that while we were still sinners, He died for us. And He told us that His followers would be known by their love. And so we are called to pray for them. And so we do. Let me ask you, have you ever thought of yourself as a weapon of God? Well, I hadn't really ever thought of that either. But then I bought a new Bible, and it was a different version than what I usually buy. And this verse jumped off the page at me. It's Romans 6, 13, and it says, And do not offer any part of it, your body, to sin as weapons for unrighteousness, but offer yourself to God and all the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. And have you considered that the Lord is using you and your prayers as His weapon for righteousness on the earth in all of these hard situations and in the lives of those who are far outside of His righteousness? Our prayers whispered through the righteousness of Christ and interpreted by the Holy Spirit and wielding the sword of the Spirit in prayer to bring God's will to earth. No wonder James wrote in James 5.16 that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Now, what do we pray? Well, first, we might need to ask the Lord to bend our heart to the right scripture to pray for those hard situations that we don't really want to pray for because He will answer that and He will show us what to pray. It may be that He calls us to pray for justice as well as truth. He might ask us to pray for mercy and salvation. He may call us to pray for healing and repentance and restoration. But whatever He calls us to pray, Women, pick up that sword of the Spirit and pray. And keep praying. And pray big. And pray big for the ones that you love. Because our God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine in every situation. Let's pray. Oh, Father, how we praise you that you call us, but you equip us. In the hard things to pray, Lord, you show us what to pray. You give us the words because you've given us your scripture. You've given your son that we can come before you into your very throne room and plead for those we love and for the hard situations and for the things that seem impossible to us. And Lord, you invite us to ask, seek, and knock, 
and to persevere in coming to you. And so, Father, we ask that you would help us to rise up bold in your strength, to proclaim your goodness, your faithfulness, your mercy, to come before you, Lord, and pour out our hearts because you bend down to listen as we petition you, our King. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, ladies.